Good morning and welcome to Sunday morning worship here with us at Santa Teresa Hills in San Jose, California. We are happy to have you join us, whether on YouTube or on Zoom. I'm Pastor Deb, and I'm happy to be back after a two-week vacation with my family in the Midwest in Illinois and Missouri. So it's great to see everyone today. We'll start uh, with the Psalm of the day. This is Psalm 145, verses 10 to 18. All of your works shall give thanks to you, O Lord, and all your faithful shall bless you. They shall speak of the glory of your kingdom and tell of your power to make known to all people your mighty deeds and the glorious splendor of your kingdom. Your kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and your dominion endures throughout all generations. The Lord is faithful in all his words and gracious in all his deeds. The Lord upholds all who are falling and raises up all who are bowed down. The eyes of all look to you and you give them their food in due season. You open your hand, satisfying the desire of every living thing. The Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Amen. So again, welcome. I'm Pastor Deb Truster. This morning, I'm assisted by liturgist Alfred Morikam, music director Hugh McDevitt, pianist Tiffany Shi, and Zoom host Steve DeJarnett. Welcome to worship with us this morning. Let us pray. Sustainer of the hungry, like a mother, you long to feed your children until each is satisfied. Turn our eyes to you alone that aware of our own deepest longings, we will reach out with Christ to share our bread and to feed others with the miracle of your love. Amen. Alfred. All right, our call to worship. Come, you who hunger for food. Worship the Lord who turns once into plenty. Come, you who hunger for justice. Worship the Lord who turns weeping into laughter. Come, you who hunger for life. Worship the Lord who is our hope and our strength. Our hymn of praise is holy, 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 Lord God Almighty.
the call to confession. Let us confess to our God, for the Lord is just in all his ways and kind in all his doings. The Lord is near to all who call on him, to all who call on him in truth. Please take a moment for our silent prayer of reflection and confession. Okay. Our prayer of confession. Please join me in the prayer of confession. Holy God, you uphold those who are falling and raise up all those who, who are bowed down. Therefore, we confess our sins, both things that we have done and things we have left undone, in every confidence that you will open our hands to us in an embrace of forgiveness and love. Amen. Now, assurance of forgiveness. Dearly beloved, through the power of the spirit that is at work within us, God forgives our sins and strengthens our inner beings. So now, live knowing the love of Christ, which surpasses all knowledge and fills us with the fullness of God. Our hymn of response is glory to God, whose goodness shines on me. Thank you, Tiffany. And now we'll continue with the time with the children. And this, of course, is for children of all ages, but especially for the younger ones. So I don't know about you guys, but I myself, I really like to eat granola bars. They're one of my favorite snacks. And um, I've been saving this one. I've been actually kind of hiding it because I, I don't really want my husband to find it because he might eat it up and then then I wouldn't have it anymore. So I, do you think that's what I should do? Oh boy, yeah, that's kind of what I thought. I kind of thought maybe, maybe I should probably share it. Yeah, sometimes it's nicer when you share things. It's a little bit more fun. Well, that reminds me of a story that I read in the Bible recently about a little boy. And this was back in the time of Jesus and his disciples. So it was a really long time ago. And this little boy had heard that Jesus was going to be coming to a place really near where they lived. So he said to his mom and dad, oh, please, 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 please let me go. I want to hear what Jesus has to say. Well, his mom was busy. She had been baking bread and his dad was busy. He had been fishing. But his mom and dad said, OK, you can go and then 
you know, you can come back and tell us what Jesus has to say, because we're a little bit busy. But his mom said, but wait, you're probably going to be gone all day. So let me pack you a lunch. So she did. And she put in five of the bread rolls that she had been baking and two little fish that his dad had caught so he could have a nice fish sandwich for lunch. So the little boy went really excited. When he got there, there were so many people. He was a little worried because he thought he might get kind of lost in the crowd. But pretty soon Jesus started to talk and he was really happy he was there. But after a while, it started to get dark and the little boy realized he hadn't even eaten his food, but other people around him were starting to get hungry. And then he thought, oh boy, all I have is this, these, these five loaves and these two fish. And where am I going to go if I think I should share them? Because maybe some other people are hungry too. And just then he saw one of the men that was with Jesus. His name was Andrew. And Andrew had come over earlier in the day to say hi to people and had talked to the little boy about it. And the little boy had proudly said, hey, my mom even brought me a lunch. She let me come today to hear Jesus. And she, she let me come and brought me a lunch. And the boy thought, mm, you know, I'm going to go see if Andrew could help me. So he found Andrew. He said, Andrew, I think I want to share my lunch, at least with Jesus, because maybe Jesus is hungry after all of this talking to people. So Andrew took him and his lunch up to talk to Jesus. And Jesus looked at the little boy and he said, thank you. This is very kind of you to share your lunch. And then Jesus did something amazing. He took the bread and the fish and he lifted them up to heaven and prayed. And then the disciples began to pass out the bread and the fish. And they passed out the bread and the fish. And they passed out the bread and the fish and more bread and more fish and more bread and more fish. It just kept appearing more and more and more until everybody had enough to eat. He didn't know how Jesus had done that, but the little boy was really glad he decided to share his lunch that day. Let's pray. God, we thank you that everybody had enough to eat and everybody was fed. Help us, Lord, to share what we have so that others can have enough. Amen. Alfred. All right. Prayer for illumination. Holy God, prepare our hearts for the reading and the proclamation of your word. May it challenge us, encourage us, inspire us, and convict us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Our first scripture reading comes from Ephesians chapter 3, verses 14 to 21. Ephesians 3, 14 to 21, and I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. For this reason, I bow my knees before the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth takes its name. I pray that, according to the riches of his glory, he may grant that you may be strengthened in your inner being with power through his spirit, and that Christ may dwell in your heart through faith as you are being rooted and grounded in love. I pray that you may have the power to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth and length and height and depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who by the power at work within us is able to accomplish abundantly far more than all we can ask or imagine. To him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus to all generations forever and ever. Amen. Now is our anthem.
That was beautiful. Thank you. Our second scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of John, chapter 6, verses 1 to 14. And I'll be reading from the New Revised Standard Version. After this, Jesus went to the other side of the Sea of Galilee, also called the Sea of Tiberias. A large crowd kept following him because they saw the signs that he was doing for the sick. Jesus went up the mountain and sat down there with his disciples. Now the Passover, the festival of the Jews, was near. When Jesus looked up and saw a large crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? He said this to test him, for he himself knew what he was going to do. Philip answered him, Six months' wages would not buy enough bread for each of them to get a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, said to him, There is a boy here who has five barley loaves and two fish. But what are they among so many people? Jesus said, Make the people sit down. Now there was a great deal of grass in that place, so they sat down, about 5,000 in all. Then Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed them to those who were seated, and also the fish, as much as they wanted. When they were satisfied, he told the disciples, Gather up the fragments left over so that nothing may be lost. So they gathered them up, and from the fragments of the five barley loaves left by those who had eaten, they filled twelve baskets. When the people saw the sign that he had done, they began to say, This is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. You may remember the story of the little boy and his lunch and how he shares it from Sunday school or from a Bible story when you were young. The scene is colorful, Jesus and his disciples and the crowd of people sitting on a field of bright green grass. But behind this pastoral scene is a harsh reality. In Jesus' day, much like in ours, only about 2% of the population lived a life of ease and plenty. The other 98% struggled from day to day to have enough to eat. Jesus knew this. His disciples did too. The crowd was hungry. They were far from a town where food could be bought, and many of them probably didn't even have the few coins needed to buy a meager supper, even if there had been any food to buy. Our world today is like this. A few are doing well, while most others are barely making it. According to UN statistics, about 9% of the world's population does not have enough food to eat. COVID has only made the situation worse. Those of us who've been to Cameroon or another developing country have seen things that tug at our hearts. Malnourished children, families living in substandard housing, people dying of treatable diseases like malaria. Even if you've never left the US, you may have seen situations that break your heart. Here in the so-called land of plenty, too many children go to bed hungry each night. Faced with these seemingly insurmountable needs, it's easy to throw up our hands and say, well, what can we do? Probably the disciples felt much the same way. Confronted with a hungry crowd of 5,000 people, Jesus asks them, where are we to buy bread for these people to eat? The disciples probably thought, what, Jesus, are you crazy? Philip replies, six months' wages would not buy enough bread for all of them to even have a little. The disciples may have been wondering what they would have for supper, much less how they would feed an enormous crowd like this. It would take a lot of money, and there weren't any ATMs in ancient Palestine. Like the disciples, when we look at the face of human need on our planet, we're tempted to despair. Some of us barely get by as it is. How can we help when the needs are so great? But this scripture shows that God does not think like we do. The Bible proclaims again and again that God has a different vision of what the world should be like. A place where everyone has enough to eat. Safe water to drink. Where there's no violence or abuse. Where children go to bed warm and fed and safe each night. 
God wants all people to have a place at the table, to be fed, clothed, warm, and safe. Jesus calls this vision the kingdom of heaven. God could have rained down manna from heaven on the multitude that day, as he did in the wilderness of Sinai when Moses led the enslaved people out of Egypt. But instead, God chose to use one little boy's generosity. While the other disciples were feeling overwhelmed by the impossibility of feeding so many people, Andrew had apparently been talking to them, making friends, including the little boy who brought a lunch of five barley loaves and two fish. Andrew was forming relationships with people in the crowd. Not a bad way to begin any ministry. So Andrew brought the little boy and his lunch to Jesus. And this child was willing to give everything he had to Jesus, even though it was obvious that five loaves and two fish were not enough to feed thousands of people. He just brought what he had. Jesus accepted the boy's offering and told the bewildered disciples to make the people sit down. Then he took the loaves and fish, gave thanks, and distributed them. And everyone ate and was satisfied. Notice a couple of things about this miracle. Jesus did not ask if these hungry people were worthy of his help. He didn't check to see if they were good enough, hardworking enough, if they had the right skin color, the right accent. Jesus just saw their need and fed them. He fed all of them. He didn't single out the ones who were most worthy of his charity. No, he just fed everybody that was hungry for whatever reason. Secondly, for once, the poor and the downtrodden were seated and were served as if they were important or well-to-do people. For some of the women in the group, that might have been a first. After all, in this culture, the men are served first, and after that, then the women can have something to eat from what's left over. Once more, Jesus is showing the disciples what it means to be a servant leader, to serve others and yourself last. As the bread and the fish were passed out, a miracle occurred. Not only was there enough food for the entire crowd, but when the disciples gathered up the fragments, they filled 12 baskets, one whole basket of leftovers for each disciple. So they hadn't, they didn't need to worry about what they were going to eat that day after all. Those who helped to serve also had plenty to eat. In serving others, we too are fed, both spiritually and physically. The kingdom of God had come upon them all that day. Some skeptical readers have speculated that maybe, shamed by the boy's generosity, others in the crowd began to take their meager lunches out of their pockets too and offer to share them. In this way, with no one hoarding their food, everyone had enough. I myself don't doubt that Jesus could do this miracle in a supernatural way. After all, he was the son of God. But knowing the selfishness of human nature, mine included, if Jesus got hungry people to share their food with strangers, it might have been an even greater miracle still. Many people today labor under the illusion that more money and more stuff will make them happy. As Christians, we know that's not true. But in our country, in this world today, and not just here, but other places too, we live under the illusion of scarcity, that there's not enough, that if somebody else is getting something, well, it'll be something we won't have. But God has provided abundantly for all our needs, if only we're willing to share. As Mahatma Gandhi said, there is enough for our need, but not for our greed. Too often, we're like the monkey in the old story who put his hand in the narrow neck of a jar to get some candy, only to find that when his fist closed around the sweets, he couldn't get his hand out of the jar. He wouldn't let go of the sweets so he could never eat them, and he was trapped. God cannot fill our hands until we let go of what we have and offer it to him like the boy with the loaves and the fishes. This miracle was made possible in part because of the boy's generosity. What if this boy had said, look, I brought this lunch for myself. If I share it, there won't be enough for me. 
These other people could have thought to bring some food too. Could Jesus still have done a miracle? Probably, but that's not what happened. Perhaps God wants to do more miracles than we can even imagine, but is waiting for us to be generous, to share what we have with others. Think what God could do in this world if we opened our hands and stopped holding so tightly to what is in them. If Jesus could take five loaves and two fishes and feed 5,000 people with 12 baskets left over, imagine what he could do with what we have. We may think our resources are slim, but when we give what we have, God will bless it and multiply it so that all may be fed. God has called us, the church, to become co-workers with him, just as this little boy was. John doesn't mention it, but in the other three Gospels, Jesus says to his disciples, you give them something to eat. In other words, you do something. Don't just stand there and say it's not your problem. You give them something to eat. I will be with you and help you so that even the little you have will be enough. You may be thinking, oh, this was a miracle. We can't be expected to do what Jesus did. But think about it. Most agricultural experts agree that we could feed everyone on the planet if we just had the will to do it. We have the technological ability to provide clean water and sanitation for everyone on the planet. We have vaccines and treatments for most of the worst diseases that afflict humanity. And if we're honest, most of us have more than enough. Why not share what we have to help both those here at home and those far away? There are many opportunities to do this. Santa Teresa Hills Presbyterian has made a good start already this year alone by helping to buy school supplies for the Santa Maria Urban Ministry, supporting the Bill Wilson Center for Homeless Youth, and sending baby quilts to the maternity clinic in Boya, Cameroon, among other projects. Soon we'll be restarting our food bank here at the church. So watch for more information. I think uh, Kathy Warwick has an announcement about this at the end of the service. Can this kind of bread and fish miracle still happen today? A few years ago, I was visiting an area near Lake Victoria, Tanzania. This is when my husband and I were serving as mission co-workers um, with the Lutheran church there. And the local Lutheran bishop was showing me around. We were visiting churches and visiting some of the people there. But everywhere we went, he kept showing me cows. I was thinking to myself, I thought we were here to see churches, but this bishop was obsessed with cows. And he kept saying, those are the heifer cattle. And I said, what, what do you mean the heifer cattle? And he explained about 20 years ago, Heifer International sent some cows now, these cows were not ordinary cows. They were great milk-producing cows. They'd been bred specially for this. They were better at milk producing milk than the local African cattle. Now, the people of that region traditionally raise cattle, so they know how to keep cattle healthy and how to make them grow. Heifer International cows thrived. They had calves. Part of the plan, each person who was given a cow must give one of its offspring to somebody else who didn't have cattle. Instead of helping only a few families, they were helping many. People in the U.S. donated money for the cattle. The Tanzanians applied their expertise in cattle raising. And just like the fish and the loaves, the cattle kept multiplying and have yielded food and milk for many people. There are a lot of stories like this, if you look, whether with cattle, with goats, with chickens, with seeds. Each one of them is a small miracle. I think our kids have contributed to giving some uh, livestock from the Presbyterian uh, giving catalog that comes out each year. And I think we're planning to do it again this year. So the miracle of the loaves and the fish is still alive. Today's gospel story concludes, when the people saw the sign that Jesus had done, they began to say, this is indeed the prophet who is to come into the world. It's not any different today. Whenever the church truly reaches out to those in need, people recognize that God is at work, and they begin to believe that Christ is truly among us. The good news is 
There is enough to go around if we bring what we have to Jesus, if we share our resources unselfishly to help others. There's enough, and we don't have to worry. Our baskets will be returned to us, filled to overflowing. And in the end, we shall all be satisfied. Amen. Let's pray. Lord, we thank you that you have given an abundance to supply all of our needs. Help us not to hoard what we have, but rather to share so that you can continue to do miracles of multiplying the loaves and fishes. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Now we'll sing the hymn, For the Fruit of All Creation. We come to our prayer time now, and I was checking my calendar and the um, newsletter that Lynn so kindly sends out every month, and I noticed how many anniversaries we have this month. Um, today, Kathy Warwick and her husband, Joe, I think are celebrating an anniversary. Tuesday, Steve and Robin DeJarnett. Last week, Jerry and Jane McMinn, and earlier this month, Cheryl and Paul Elliott. So I think we have to give thanks for all of these marriages and for the families they represent. Also, Hamlet and Defon Jr., uh, his birthday is tomorrow. Re Rogan and Rona Suter and Mia and Wa also had birthdays this month. So I apologize if I missed anybody. I probably have, um, but uh, just wanted to give, start by giving thanks uh, for all of these families and for all of these young people uh, and others who are celebrating their birthday. So God of life and hope, hear our prayer. So now if you have any prayers you'd like to um, voice, whether they're prayers of thanksgiving or prayers of petition for your own self or for the needs of the world, just feel free to unmute and speak up. And when you're done, say God of life and hope, and we will all join you with the phrase, hear our prayer. Don't wait for me to call on you. Just go ahead and speak out. So I just want to raise Thanksgiving for a wonderful time last night at Savannah Chanel. We had 11 of us there and had some good food and drink. And we even danced a little, <laughs> <laughs> but it was fun. So our first in-person fellowship event. Thanks be to God. God of life yes. and hope. Hear, Hear our, our prayers. prayers.
I'm thankful for safe travels um, for my husband, myself, and our daughter as we went home to um, commemorate uh, a memorial service for my mom and uh, my brother, who both passed away this last year. Um, so it was good to see family and friends, um, but I would continue to ask for prayers for my father, who naturally has been a bit depressed because of the events of this last year. God of life and hope, hear our prayer. Joy. Yes, um, I am leaving on Tuesday for 10 days at, in Texas with my sister and her family, and I ask for travel mercy. God of life and hope. Hear our prayer. Um, um, I and Marilyn would like to ask for uh, Johnny Mercies as um, we will be driving back home from Southern California where we took the kids for their little vacation. So we are asking for Johnny Mercies as we drive back home. God of life and hope. Yeah. Hear our prayer. Pray of Thanksgiving for my mom. Today is her birthday, 87 years old. Uh, God of life and hope. Hear our prayer. I'm going to also ask for another prayer for Joe's sister, Marty. Um, she has leukemia and the, the treatment has not been working. So um, she's in really good spirits, but um, just would really appreciate your prayers for her. Her name's Marty, God of life and hope. Hear our prayer. I don't see anyone else. Am I missing anybody? Okay, let's join together in prayer and we'll conclude with the Lord's Prayer. Our loving God, we thank you. You have truly provided for all our needs. We know there is more than enough. Help us to have faith that you are there and will provide for us even when we see that maybe our resources are small. And not only that, but help us to be generous, to reach out and share what we have with others, Lord. And in so doing, set an example of your love, your kingdom, and your generosity to others so they may truly see that Christ is alive in our world and that um, your kingdom is present even among us, even now. Lord, we also would remember in our prayers those who are suffering, whether from COVID or other diseases, especially in those countries where the vaccines have not really been readily available. We also pray for those who will go to bed hungry tonight. We pray, Lord, for solutions to these difficult problems. Help us to know what our part might be to play in bringing about um, a more just world where more fewer people can go, will go to bed hungry or without their basic necessities. Lord, we continue to pray for the families and friends of those who lost loved ones in the building collapse in Miami. Lord, for those who are suffering uh, from violence in Cameroon and so many other places around the world. And Lord, we think of um, those people in our hearts that we have not said aloud, but our own concerns, our friends, our family, that we may be worried about or concerned about, Lord. You know what is in our hearts and you hear our prayers. Lord, we ask that your will be done in all of these situations. And now, Lord, we join together in the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now you may offer a sign of peace to those around you or raise a hand of blessing to all of those worshiping virtually with you. May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen.
As we present our gifts and offerings, let us remember because a little boy shared his bread and fish, a multitude ate. Let us share what has been given to us. Let us pray. We rejoice with thanksgiving for all we have received. Multiply these gifts that we give so that the world may more deeply know fullness of life in you. Amen. Our closing hymn, Great God of Every Blessing, will be followed then by a few announcements, um, including one from Kathy about the food bank. Great God of Every Blessing. Thank you. And um, we have a prayer that has come in on the chat. I'm sorry, I didn't see it a little earlier from Rafael Zambrano. Uh, so the Zambrano family would like to thank God for bringing Pally home after a long medical stay in the hospital. And um, I'm really sorry because I didn't realize that um, Pally was ill. So um, let's have a short prayer. Thank you, God, for your care and your mercy for us. Even when things don't look so good, we know you are there with us. And we thank you that Pally's health has recovered and that she's now back home. We pray for continued recovery and for um, continued good health for her and for their whole family. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Um, we now have a few announcements. Kathy, I think you wanted to say something. Yes, yes. I have. I have two announcements. Um, as some of you know, we've been doing church and world ministry work via email. Well, I want to tell all the members of my committee, there are two emails out there that they need to help me make decisions from, especially with um, the one great hour of sharing is coming up and we need to make some plans by early August. So if you could check all your emails and get back to me, I'd appreciate that. And then with the theme of today, we're talking about opening the STHPC food bank on a limited scale. And what we need to do though, is to replenish it. And we have received money from the presbytery to help us do that in the form of a grant. So I need a few people who would like to go shopping and then we will probably find some volunteers to help us organize and pack and help Christy pre-do the bags so that she doesn't have to do anything except say, Here, here's your two bags. And Here's your homeless bag and go on from there. So if you'd like to do that, please send me an email and we can proceed. Thank you for all your help. Thank you very much. And I just received a correction. It was Nancy who was Pally's mom. So we'll certainly keep Nancy 
in prayer. And uh, I'm glad that Pally wasn't, wasn't ill, but I'm, um, I'm glad that her mom's doing better. So thank you so much, Kathy. And I think young people are also welcome to help. Um, so I, I think you can get in touch with me or with the church office, especially while Christy is there on Tuesdays and Thursdays. It's always a good time to call. Thanks again to Paul and Cheryl Elliott and their committee for organizing the get together yesterday at Savannah Chantel Vineyards and save the date of Friday, September 10th to attend a Giants baseball game together. Also save the date of September 12th. This we will be celebrating our church homecoming. And uh, I see that Dave has his hand up. Dave, go right ahead. <laughs> Hi, if you don't mind, just two quick announcements. Um, one, in case you're wondering on the return to worship and that work, um, I've got emails from Steve and Horace and myself. All the equipment is on order and arriving presently. So now we're hoping next weekend, perhaps we'll start with the installation. But I wanted to let folks that, that things are moving slowly, but moving along. Also, a quick reminder to the folks I emailed on Buildings and Grounds and some others that we're going to have a quick meeting after the service uh, to talk about some preschool requests. Thanks. Thank you. Really appreciate that. Um, so we're moving slowly toward getting back in person, but we don't want to leave anybody out because we know some join us from a distance and some may not feel confident to come back uh, in person quite yet because of health concerns. So, uh, and we're always aware there is of course the Delta variant, um, although I understand people who are vaccinated don't need to worry too much about it, but uh, we're moving toward um, being back in person. So we'll keep you updated on that. Let us join together now in the charge and benediction. If we give ourselves and our possessions to Christ, God can take the little we have and multiply it many times over so that the needs of the world can be met. Rooted and grounded in the love of Christ, let us go to make known to all people the mighty deeds of God. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you always. Amen.